to become one. Uh, she's very thoughtful to set an alarm to make sure she was awake at the prescribed time. That's how you know the show is live, not pre-recorded. But, um, you know, I guess we were a minute or two early, and that's what happened. Um, th- now... Um, we've all seen, oh, I think, I don't know if we all seen, most of us have seen the film The The Sixth Sense with Bruce Willis and Haley Joel Osment with classic lines. I see dead people. In your dreams? While you're awake? Did people like in graves and coffins? Walking around like regular people. That film, uh, Echo, how realistic is that sort of thing where you have people that are normal people, be they adults or younger folks, that see spirits or ghosts walking around when Mm -hmm. um, other folks don't see them? Oh, that's, that's not uncommon. Really, for the for the little boy in the in the movie, oh, God, it just creeped me out when you played that. Um, <clears throat> he, you know, obviously had a sixth sense. He had uh, developed his third eye, and so he was able to see these people. And it, it's not uncommon at all for one person in the family to be able to see ghosts, while the rest of them think you're crazy. And, um, you know, one of the characters, I don't want to give too much away because it is a good film if people haven't seen it, but one of the characters in that film, maybe more than one, they don't know that they're actually dead, and they're dead the whole time. How common is that? Could someone be dead and not actually know it? Okay. That is not as common as the movies or TV make us believe. Really, it's not. You know... Frank, really, in all the years I've done this, I've met one ghost who claimed, and he really did seem like he didn't know he was deceased. But, okay, this lady called. Every night when she went to bed, something would jump on her bed, jump on her bed, jump on her bed. She would come home from work every day. Clothes would be pulled out of the closet. Things on her dresser would be knocked on the floor. This went on every day. All right. And so they called. I went over. And it was a brand new experience for me because I had never met a ghost that didn't know they were deceased. So this guy, okay, when I first got there, there, I walked every room. I did not see a spirit at all. And then I just sat on her bed and said, okay, he'll be here. And within seconds... This young man, um, God, how old would he, did he look, maybe 18, this young man, spirit, ghost, he comes into the room, and it was really creepy because it was the first time I had ever seen someone look, okay, it's kind of like in that movie, he had on a military uniform, and he had a hole blown right through him and it it appeared bloody and it it really was startling for me i just thought what the heck and one of my guides was with me spirit guides and he said this kid doesn't know he's dead and he said you're gonna have to tell him and i thought what How is that even possible? Well, okay, so this was around 1992, and, oh, geez. Um, So I said to the young man, what is your name? And he said, Kenneth. I said, okay, Kenneth, um, what, what year do you think this is? And he said, it's 1968, and I just came back from Vietnam, and this bitch is living in my house. Just like that. And he said, and I want her out of here. And I'm trying everything I can to get her out of my house. And so I I just sat there staring at this guy. And I said, okay, Kenneth, your last memory is Vietnam. Yes. I said, okay, well, this is 1992. And it looks 
like you died in Vietnam. I said, look down at yourself. And he looked down at himself and he got furious and <clears throat> started calling me a bitch, told me to get the hell out of the house. I had no right to be there. I had no right to ask him these questions. Uh, he said, just tell this B-I-T-C-H to get out of my house, and uh, then I can just live here again like I used to. I mean, it, you know what, Frank, that took, and then he left. He wow. left the room. So I just patiently waited because I knew he'd be back, and it took three hours of talking to this guy to finally get him. I mean, Frank, it's more like ghost counseling than ghost busting. Really, honey. um, As I'm sure you're aware, there are some people that don't believe in ghosts. They don't believe that when someone dies that their soul or any part of them lingers on Earth and and interacts with uh, the, the world that they've left behind. What do you say to those people that might be ghost skeptics? Oh, well, <clears throat> I you know, when I was younger, I thought, okay, I have to prove this to people. I have to find a way to prove this to people. And uh, I finally got to the place in my life where, no, I, I don't know. I don't have to prove this. This is just what it is. You know, people... When people come at me and say, oh, you're making this stuff up, it's like, well, um, first of all, I'm not that creative, believe me. And secondly, I just explain to them, you know, we all have a soul and we have free will in death just as we do in life. And so when we die and our soul comes out of the body, <clears throat> it, can, it can choose to stay earthbound. And so that's actually what the book is about, is the six main reasons why souls, these ghosts, have told us they don't want to go to the other side. They want to stay here. And, you know, Frank, I, 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 <clears throat> I mean, how can you prove to anybody that there's a ghost? I mean, right. I just know they are. Right. I see them. Uh, yeah. no. And where do... And if people are just tuning in, we're talking with Echo Bodine. She is the author of the book, How to Live a Happily Ever Afterlife, Stories of Trapped Souls and How Not to Become One. It's available uh, either on her website or wherever books are sold. Uh, Where do our souls go when we die, generally? Okay, generally. uh, Well, actually, everybody, except for the folks that choose to stay earthbound, but there actually is a place that we call heaven, Uh, or the other side, and there really is a white light. It actually looks like a really, really big, white, full moon. And souls feel immediately drawn to that light. But again, we have free will, so we can say, no, I'm not going there. You know, Frank, the number one reason why these folks choose to stay earthbound is that they tell us, well, God can't find me as long as I'm still here. And if I go to the other side, God's going to send me to hell. So I'm just going to stay here. And and we say to these ghosts, really, you're just, you're just going to stay in this tanning parlor till eternity or this, you know, treatment center or this uh, school or, uh, God, I, did a school, there were 36 teenage ghosts, souls, hanging around this school. And when I asked them, okay, why don't you guys, why aren't you going to the other side? They said, so this was their belief, well, once we get to heaven, we just turn into angels and we just play a harp all day. It's like, oh my God. Or, um, well, there's no parties there, and there's lots of parties here, and we don't want to go. And that was the consensus of all those teenage souls. Heaven is going to be boring. I don't want to go there. I'll go there when I'm older. And so they just look around for groups of other teenage souls, and they go hang out with them. I mean, it's just fascinating to hear their reasons why. And... 
you know, when even when I tell them, you guys, there's parties in heaven. I mean, you can, you're, you're just going to, you're just, it's like you're moving from one neighborhood to the next. And um, you can do whatever you want over there. Um, it, it's, it's just a continuation of your life. So many of these ghosts are really resistant to change. They don't want change. They're afraid of change. They just they just want to stay earthbound, and and you know. But I mean, it's it's a lonely existence, and so that's why we always feel like you know we got to help these folks go on to the other side. Are are all spirits considered ghosts? No, no. Okay, the difference is. All right, so our soul, when the, when the body dies, the soul comes out of the body, and then it just gra- it gravitates. It just slowly moves towards the white light. And when we get to the white light, it's been explained to me that the white light is like a porch light at the front door of heaven. Okay, and so that's why our souls are just automatically drawn to that light, um, except for the ones that choose to stay here. So when we see souls, we call them spirits, right? But the spirits that choose to stay earthbound are called ghosts. So that's the difference. Is a ghost is simply the soul or spirit of a living person who is now deceased, and they are... They stay, they look just like their body. Kind of, they call them uh, the body double or their twin. Um, <clears throat> and again, they usually move on. And, you know, Frank, I can always tell a difference because, like, if I walked into a house and, oh, there's, you know, uh, the ghost. Okay. And if a spirit comes in there, Okay, the difference is that ghosts or souls have a cold, kind of grayish feel to them. And a spirit, someone who's actually living on the other side, but they've come to visit this side, they have a very alive, happy energy to them. So there is a difference. Hmm. And, you know, Frank, when I've done some TV shows, I've had many camera people say, you know, sorry, lady, but I don't really believe in this stuff. And I, you know, I always say that's okay. I mean, you don't have to. But this one particular job, the woman that was haunting the house, she had lived in the house and she died. She had cancer. She died. And shortly after she died, her husband married the neighbor and she was furious about this so her soul came back here and she lives in that house now and she is doing everything she can to drive this woman out of the house so okay so her energy as always was cold not well yes it is an obvious cold I asked her, I said, would you mind if I had that man come over here and feel your energy? And she said, I don't care what you do. And so I said to the cameraman, okay, come here. I want, I want you to feel this. And Frank, it was really cool because he started, I, I said to him, okay, here's her head. And just move, you can move your hands down and you can feel where her shoulders are um, or were, um, you can feel it. And he was just like, yeah, whatever. But he did. He came and felt her, and he was totally freaked out. He said, oh, my God, there is something here. And I said, yes, there is. And then he had the other camera guy come. He felt it. And then the producer She had been upstairs talking to the homeowner, and um, when she came downstairs, he told her, he said, here, you got to come over here. you got to feel this. And she was skeptical also, but she came over. She ran her hands, you know, 